So this is 10.4 perimeters uh, and areas of similar figures. The way I remember this is if I'm measuring in centimeters, um, so this is for you, Justin. If I'm measuring something in centimeters, what are the units of the perimeter? So if I'm measuring a square, I'm finding its perimeter, the, the numbers are all in centimeters, what's the units for that perimeter? Sure. Centimeters. Now think about that same figure, this is for Merck. So I'm doing that same figure, so say it's a square, and I'm finding the area of that square, what are the units for that square? It looks like this. I have a square, say it's like 10 centimeters. What is the area for just the unit? Yeah, it's going to be centimeters squared. So the scale factor, the ratio of the perimeters, it's just the same as the scale factor or the ratio of the side lengths. It's A to B. The areas, you've got to take that ratio and square it because how, what units does area come in? It comes in square units. So areas are squared. The scale factor is squared to get to the next. And perimeter, it's just the same scale factor to get from side to side. So when we look at example one, we're told that the polygons are similar. It wants to know what the ratio of the perimeters is. It's the same as the side. So it's going to be 6 to 10. We are, of course, going to reduce that because anytime you are giving out a ratio or a scale factor, we want it in reduced form. Uh, so that's three fifths, or if you want to write it as three colon five, that is also correct. So the ratio of the areas is going to be that ratio squared. So it's going to be three fifths squared. The whole reason we did all that exponent shenanigans, one of them is so that we can do the scale factor of the ratios correctly. So we know when the exponent's on the outside, it gets distributed to everything on the inside. So what is 3 squared? 9 and 5 squared. Okay, so the ratio of the area is 9 to 25. If you want to write it as 9 colon 25, that is also the same. You may see it either way. Now it gets diabolical. So Why don't you just leave it simple? Why are you doing that? Uh, as of writing it as a ratio? No, no, why don't you just leave it as three fifths? Because uh, that works for perimeters, but I need to square it to find what it is for the areas. Because for perimeter, it's straight up. For areas, we got to square it. And you'll see a little bit more as we do this. Problem. Okay. So example two says the ratio of the lengths of corresponding sides of two similar rectangles is 4 to 11. Now, if you're like me, I'm a visual learner, so I kind of need a picture. And I know some people are reluctant to draw a picture for some reason. I find that it helps um, get my brain engaged in what I'm trying to ask. So we've got rectangles. The ratio of the side lengths is 4 to 11. We don't quite know what the side is, but we know the small guy is 4 and the big guy is 11. I'm going to write that as a fraction. What is the perimeter of the larger rectangle? So we want to find this. If the smaller one has a perimeter of 20. So you go, 4 goes with the small. 11 goes with the larger. That's going to be equal to the perimeter of the small. 
over the perimeter of the larger. So you can use that scale factor of this size to deal with perimeters as well. Okay, so we're going to go cross multiply 4 times x equals 20 times 11. Uh, 20 times 11, well I know 2 times 11 is 22, and it just has a 0 on it. You guys okay with that mental math? Larger. Okay. Then we divide both sides by 4 to find that the perimeter of the larger one, well, 4 goes into 22 5 times with 2 left over. Uh, bring down the 0, 4 goes into 25 times. Uh, seven meters. So the perimeter of the larger one is 55 centimeters. Sorry, I'm just doing mental math. I apologize if that is too slow for your brain. Uh, so that takes care of this question. We still have a whole other question we have to answer. What is the area of the larger rectangle if the smaller one has an area of 16 centimeters squared? We're going to set this up the same way. So it's going to be 4 over 11 uh, is equal to 16 over x, except instead of using 4 over 11 straight up, when we talk about areas, we have to square it. I am notoriously taking up space, though. Since I'm the master of this universe, I can actually move example 3 down. Okay. So I'm going to square 4, and Dylan, that's you. What's 4 squared? And Grant, do you know what 11 squared is? It is 121. Okay, so do we, this is for Clay, do we need to cross multiply to find x or can we just cut to the Do you feel okay doing that? What is x? 121. And that's centimeters squared. So if we're talking areas, we got to take our scale factor and square it. we got to take our ratios and square it in order to use it for areas. Okay. Nancy, can you read example 3 for It's a print and copy store, but in my mind, it also sells popcorn. I thought it would be good because the, the markup on popcorn is incredible. It costs like half a cent to make and you can sell it for a dollar. That's a good market. So anyway, in our pop copy store, not only do we sell popcorn, but we sell copies. Um, we're going to get our little color photo print to give to Nana for her birthday. Happy birthday, Nana. Um, we're gonna, we know about an 8 by 10, so once again, I am a visual learner. So let's go ahead and write that out. 8 by 10 is the small one. Uh, 16 by 20 it is the bigger one. This guy costs uh, 42 cents or 0.42 of a dollar. Um, the store charges by area. So what is the area of this little guy? It's 80. It's 8 times 10. And that would be inches squared. And we can find the area but my brain is too lazy to find the area of this because I don't want to like I guess it would be what 320 but let's do it where let's use proportions 
So let's say, because I'm too lazy to calculate what 16 times 20 is, let's do, set up a proportion. What is the scale factor of our side ratio? And this goes to Jack. So what is the scale factor of our little guy to our big guy, just size? Yeah, so I'm going to write the first one uh, so we can go 20 over 10. If you wanted, you can write it as 16 over 8. Um, both ways give you a scale factor of 2 over 1, or a ratio of the size of 2 over 1. And then, Jack, before I release you from your obligation, we're talking areas here. So what do we get when we square 2 over 1? Mm -hmm. So the ratio of the areas of our big guy to our little guy is 4 over 1. We know the area of the little guy is 80. We can find the area of our big guy. Couldn't you have found the uh couldn't you have found that same answer just by dividing eighty by two twenty? Still come out to be four. Uh-huh. Uh, I'm just because I want you to see how squaring the scale factor will give you the yeah, same. No, yeah, yeah. So I know it feels a little roundabout. Uh so we're going to Cross multiply and 80 times 4, well 8 times 4 is 32. So the area of our big guy, which we already knew, is 320 square inches. Okay. <clears throat> We're going to use that area formula one more time. Um, because we know that our uh, little guy costs 42 cents. So we're going to go uh, 0.42. We don't know how much our big guy costs. Uh, so we'll go see. But because it's based on areas, it should be equal to our area ratio. So 0.42 over 1. So we're going to go ahead and multiply 0.42 by 4. Yeah. So 4 times 2 is 8. 4 times 4 is 16. So the cost of our big copy is going to be $1.68. Because it's four times as big, the area is four times as big as the little guy's area. So when you double the side, you quadruple the area. I'm going to write that down for you because this comes up several times. Quadruple. So when you double the sign, I'll quadruple the area. Because what's two times two? Four. So that's where the quadruple comes in. Okay, one more page. Oh, no, we don't. No, we don't. We answer all of them? Yep. What? Awesome. Okay, good job, guys. So now is the, uh, 